clocked it, it was always a dream of mine. And I always think back how privileged I was to get the opportunity to go there, and not just go there, but to actually walk in the footsteps of those pioneers that I'd read about so many years before. Explorers that took on this challenge over 100 years ago, mostly British, and here's one of my personal heroes, Ernest Shackleton, a great man in a crisis. He was a great man in a lost cause. He was knighted and he became an Edwardian hero. And he had a very unusual management style. Books have been written about him. Shackleton's Way, if you haven't read it, it's very interesting. It talks about his management style. They study this in universities today. A lot of people recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> so when I put an expedition together, I've done all the research, I know what's involved. I haven't signed up for it, I haven't paid any money. The first thing I'll do is tell three or four of my best mates what I'm going to do. That way they're going to spread the word and you can never ever back out of that. <laughs> the most fun I had with this thing was on a sunny Sunday afternoon in August when the place is full of tourists. <laughs> I would appear at the bottom of Getty Street looking something like the swamp thing, <laughs> covered in mud, dust. I've been dragging this thing for eight hours, and all the tourists parted like the Red Sea. <laughs> the and when we get to where we're camping at night, no trouble finding a campsite, by the way. <laughs> so as I say, here I was, 700 kilometers from the South Pole, two bad feet. There were tears of pain, and there were tears of despair and I didn't know what to do. What would we all do in that situation? It would be easy to pull out the satellite phone, put the, flip the cash back, press the big red button, and get flown out of here. That would be easy. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't bring myself to quit on this expedition. I had to find a way. I had to find a way to continue. And you know, I think in this situation, it always comes down to a couple of things. The biggest thing is attitude. It doesn't matter how bad things are, no one can determine how you respond to it. <laughs> and you know, on expeditions like this, on any trip, it's really important to have a mascot. He is my mascot. His name's Oscar, and he's a small cat from a one-room schoolhouse in Wales. I've been going there and speaking there for about six years now. Whenever we go over to England, I go there and speak. And they asked me to take their school mascot to the South Pole. So my wife Elizabeth made him the same outfit that I had. <laughs> and, and I can't say enough about these guys. These are all can-do guys. You know, life is full of too tired, too dark, can't be bothered, next week, sometime never. These are can-do guys. And I'd go anywhere with them. And I would not have reached the South Pole without all of these guys. Oh. <laughs> and if anyone was wondering what was left of my thermorest at the end, that's it. Yeah. But it did save my feet. It's probably in some landfill in southern Chile now. And the bad news was that I lost 25 pounds on the expedition. I'm 170 pounds to start with, so I was pretty frail at the end. That's the bad news. The good news is, I put on 20 pounds in two weeks. <laughs> that was fun. Everything comes to an end, though. I hit all the all-you-can-eat buffets in South America <laughs> and ate square meals a day when I got home. I don't think the people at the buffets knew what had hit them. <laughs> and despite all the injuries that I had, despite the tough times, when I would stop and just stand still and rest my feet, I would look around at this place that I was in. I was in Antarctica. I was walking to the South Pole. How fortunate could I be? And so people ask me why I do this stuff. You know, why do you do things that are difficult and usually very miserable? And the only way I can answer it is, I feel most alive when I'm doing that stuff. I feel most of who I really am when I'm out there in the middle of nowhere, everything I need to survive, headed towards a goal. So, go out there and pick something that's incredibly difficult. You have no idea how to do it. Then figure out how to do it. Tell all your friends you're going to do it. <laughs> Plan it. Do what you say you're going to do. And never ever give up. Thank you. <laughs>